right, we are back. We just covered uh, Steve Wilkes. He's he got fired from the San Francisco 49ers. He got blamed for another Kyle Shanahan's mess, just like Dan Quinn got blamed for Kyle Shanahan's mess in Atlanta. Seems like everybody goes all head over heels to protect. I feel like one of the biggest uh, choke artists is out there. But we got another firing, people. We got another firing. I love it. I love those, those interludes. Those interludes are the dopest. Shout out to everybody who's rocking with us doing that. Okay, so moving along, Ohio State, they fired their men's basketball coach, Mr. Chris Holtman, after seven seasons. Uh, this is coming to you from The Athletic and Dana O'Neill. It says here, Chris Holtman, he was in the middle of his seventh year when he was released on Wednesday over the past two years. The Buckeyes are 30 and 30 with a 9 and 25 conference record. They have lost 16 consecutive road games tied for the longest streak in the program history. Wow. I had no idea it was that bad. 9 and 25 in the conference? Really? At seven years? At seven years, and that was your record. Holtman had four years remaining on his contract that ran through 2027 and 2028. And he will be owed $12 million remaining on his deal. Now, that's the part that I think that's disgusting. That you somehow deserve more compensation because you were extremely bad at your job. And you can be paid money. You can be paid that kind of money to leave and not come back on the premises. I've always felt like when it comes to a buyout situation, you should be given probably a million bucks and then that's it. But 12 million? Come on now. Again, who are the agents? These guys are so bad at their job. When they get released, they want immediate compensation. But you're telling me the kids who you go out and recruit, who have to play, who have to bring in airtime, TV deals, and millions of dollars is made on these guys' backs, they start making a little bit of money in the NIL series and the whole era of NCAA athletics now. And somehow or another, you don't see a problem with coaches making double-digit millions for being that awful. This dude was 30 and 30. 30 and 30. 9 and 25 in a conference. And that's after seven years. Oh, my God. Holtman had four years remaining on his deal, like we talked about. That's what I hate. Again, when these guys are so bad at their job, they're paying them double to leave. They're paying them that much money to leave and exit the premise. And that's got to stop. Now, the athletic director, Mr. Gene Smith, said, I want to express... My appreciation toward Chris for the first class program. What first class, bro? Y'all was a laughing stock, man. Nine wins, nine and 25 in the conference. Come on, man. The worst coach can win better than that. The worst coach. You can go find anybody in the church league and go up there and win nine games, man. Come on, man. All those facilities, million dollar recruiting budgets. We're not talking about some tiddlywink AAU franchise. We're talking about the Ohio State University. It just don't make sense. Again, I want to express my appreciation toward Chris for the first class program and well-respected program he ran here at Ohio State. Really? I don't think anybody respected you all. Nobody feared Ohio State basketball coming to town if anything looking at this 9 and 25 conference when y'all was a whole plate out here in these basketball streets 
they was going in y'all back every time you seen Ohio State on the schedule. It was easy. It was easy comings. And this ain't me talking trash. These are just your facts. He and his wife, Lori, are wonderful people. I think of each of them. Well, I thank each of them for their seven years here in Columbus. And I wish them well. One thing I think is tacky that these athletic directors have to stop doing. I think these athletic directors have to stop mentioning the coaches' wives. I, I never liked that because I don't know how many times that they actually get to meet the coach's spouse, other than the fact that when he gets hired that day and he does the whole presser, it just strikes me as weird that you want to congratulate a woman that you don't even know. Just because you fired her husband. You know, thank her too. What did she do? Mm. <laughs> she was just married to a loser. <laughs> Whatever, man. And now Holtman says here that he was blindsided by the change and said that he didn't have an opportunity to meet with his players. I don't think that would have mattered. If you met with the players and you told the players, hey, look, man, I got fired. If anything, they would have a sigh of relief because they knew they were on to a winning season. Like, whew, really? Man, you playing? You fired? For real? Happy days are here again. <laughs> with Smith set to retire as athletic director on June 30th, Ross Bjork, the incoming AD will lead the coaching search. Bjork, Bork, who will become the AD July 1st, will soon start the interim advisor to the athletic director on March the 1st. So, again, you can see where OSU was fed up with uh, Holtman, his record. They wanted to get out of there in the Big Ten. The Big Ten tournament's coming up, and there's a whole lot of basketball left. Because you've got the Big Ten tournament coming up and you got the March Madness selection. I'm not saying that Ohio State is going because they're one of the worst teams in the uh, Big Ten. But I will say that the NIT might be in their future. And that's still a lot of basketball for an interim coach to come in and kind of get his footing. So congratulations to the, the good people of Columbus who got rid of a laughing stock of a coach. Congratulations to the new AD Bork, who is going to come in and do great things with the program, I hope. And, and we'll just wait to see. Again, this is Big Vern. We're at the middle of the hour. We'll be back. More stories about Georgia, South Carolina, and um, LSU.